fantastic view. I'm in my favourite place in Victoria. It's Anglesey on the Great Ocean Road. Millions of visitors come here for the beaches and these epic views of the coastline. But it's worth taking a closer look at what's happening further inland. The Anglesey Heath is a glimpse of what a lot of Australia would have once looked like. The Wadda Warrung people have been custodians of this coastline and bush for tens of thousands of years. It's a biodiversity hotspot. A whopping quarter of the state's plants can be found here in Anglesey's heathland, including hundreds of species of wildflower. And in late winter and spring, the heathland explodes with colour. Today, I'm heading out for a bushwalk with a local who knows the area really well. Pete Crowcroft is an educator who spends most of his time teaching people about the plants and animals that call the surf coast home. So, Pete, what makes up a, a heathland? Well, a heathland is really predominated by low-lying, shrubby, sclerophyllous vegetation, so it's got hard, leathery leaves, and they don't lose moisture mm. easily. Mm. So they, they've really adapted to this, because it's quite poor soil. It's highly infertile, that's right. And these are trees, though, so they still fit into the heathland? Well, I'd call this a heathy woodland. So what is this tree? This one's called the Anglesey grey gum, Eucalyptus mm. littoralis, and it's endemic to this region. Nice. So it's only found here. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's one of our species that's uh, a true local. Yeah. All right, let's go and have a look at a few flowers. I'm sort of looking for. Absolutely lovely. At this time of the year, there can be hundreds of different species of wildflower in bloom. There are plenty of creamy candles around, as well as the bright pops of colour from the pink heath, Victoria's floral emblem. Oh, look at this one, Jane. This oh, is really special. That is a special one. That's a little green hood, isn't it? A bearded green hood. Mm -hmm. But even more importantly, it's the Anglesey bearded green hood. And Only... what makes it different? Well, it's got this labellum, which is like a feather, so it gets considered to be part of Pterostylus plumosa, like feather. But it has this extra special little green horn at the end of its labellum there which makes it the Anglesey bearded green hood. And it's going to be called Pterostylus unicornis. A <laughs> good name for it. Mm. You do have to have really good eyes to even spot that, don't yeah. you? <laughs> wow. We have to be a bit careful where we're standing mm. here because we're literally in a field of spider orchids. And how amazing is that? And it's fantastic. It's just like a sea of them. Yes. They're everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we've got this one here, the wine-lipped spider orchid. And we've also got the thick-lipped spider orchid. Oh, oh. They're, they're very different, aren't they? Mm, you yeah. can see why they're called a spider orchid, can't you? Yes. So their, their structure is that they've got their three petals and their three sepals. And one of the petals is modified into the labellum, which is the runway for the pollinator. Yes, once you get your eye in for these orchids, there's, they're just sort of patches of them everywhere. You start to see them all over the place. Mm, mm. Like, have a look here. We've got the leopard orchids. So on the back of those two yellow petals, mm. it'll be covered in spots. Hence the name mm. leopard. <laughs> Fire is a natural part of this landscape, with many plants needing it to stimulate growth. Pete and I are heading to an area that was part of a planned burn about 18 months ago. Oh, look at it. Yeah, it's really burnt, it burnt in the middle, isn't it? Oh, gosh. So why was this area burnt? Well, the heathland responds really readily to fire. And as we can see, a lot of these plants are really bouncing back strongly. And, and the smoke and the ash is really vital, isn't it, in this whole process? Mm, it can definitely stimulate the seeds yeah. to germinate. And then the seeds fall onto the ash and help them grow. Well, there's a, a nice bed of ash after the fire, mm. and so the seeds have got that nice friable substrate to grow through. Yeah. 
I can see the banks here that's really regenerating very quickly. And what about these grass trees? Well, they are renowned for their uh, characteristic flowering after fire. Mm. They shoot up this amazing flowering stem we call a kangaroo tail. And now, 18 months later, we've got the, the seed pods opening and there must be thousands of seeds it's phenomenal, littering isn't it? this area. And I love this one. Where is there? Look at that crazy looking seed pod there. It's got great foliage, this one, mm. and it has to be one of my favourites. It's called the horny cone bush. It took me a while to figure out what was happening here when I was looking after the fire, that there was this strange seed pod here, and it made me realise that it's hidden usually amongst the foliage, and once that burns off, it uh, stimulates the pods to open and release the seeds. So this area is going to have masses of them. Let's, let's hope so. Yeah, beautiful. It's an amazing, complex ecosystem here, isn't it? The way things interact with each other. Oh, it really is. I mean, if the important take-home message is that a lot of the flowers that we've seen today, they've got their own unique stories. Whether it's the interactions they have with their pollinator, whether it's a fly or a wasp, or whether it's the interactions under the ground mm. with the fungi. And often that's why we can only see them in natural settings like this, because there's such complex relationships that it makes it hard to, to cultivate. Well, it's been a delight to walk with you, I can only say. It's just, just <laughs> a delight fabulous. to show you my backyard, Jane. Oh, and what a backyard it is. I shall come again. It's lovely. <laughs> Plants need to be tough to survive here, but what it shows is that through adversity, you get biodiversity. And you'll find that the Anglesey Heap is such a beautiful reward for straying just a little further inland. Give it a go.